It's A Plus Weekly, my news roundup of what has caught my eye this week in the tech world, focusing on the Apple ecosystem, out first on YouTube as a video podcast, and then on the usual podcast platforms. On the show this week, is Apple about to get into journaling and health coaching too? Things are moving fast in India. How Apple may be planning to block sideloading outside of expected changes for the iPhone in the EU, developing specs to alert for unwanted tracking, and a fun way to consume your news. I'm Saab Johal, let's get into it. Is Apple getting into journaling? With mindfulness a part of Apple Watch and Apple Fitness, it's obvious Apple looks like it wants to go even further in its offering for users. Rumor has it that the company's got a journaling app for iOS up their sleeve, and they could be showing it off at WWDC. For those new to it, journaling is about recording your thoughts, feelings, and activities to help yourself mentally and physically. It can help with mindfulness, memory, self-confidence, and even give your immune system a bit of a boost. Makes sense why Apple would want in. Reportedly, Apple's iteration is codenamed Jurassic, and the Wall Street Journal, who has seen internal documents from Apple, claims it can make fuller use of the hardware more than third-party apps. And the report claims the app can check out texts, calls, and what the owner is doing which doesn't sound sketchy at all, does it? I'm guessing there might be some toggle switches around those options. Well, there will be if they have any sense. The app will check out what a typical day looks like for the user, like how much time they spend at home compared to other places, and if something unusual has happened on a certain day, like hitting the gym perhaps. Apple is even considering something called all day people discovery, which will detect when you're around others. and. Apple will seek to distinguish between friends outside work and colleagues. That's a mystery to me why Apple spends so much on advertising that it respects privacy, yet wants people to know how much it can infer from their movements. This might raise more questions about exactly how Apple uses our data internally and what else happens to it. Existing journaling apps are going to be in trouble if Apple jumps in. The company has trodden down its software makers enough that it has a special term, Sherlocking. Way back two decades ago, Sherlock software was suspected of stealing features from a third party software called Watson. Who knows? When the Wall Street Journal told Paul Main, the founder of the day one journaling app about the upcoming journaling feature, he was the one who mentioned the term. It's always the worst thing to have to hear that you're about to be Sherlocked, he said. Now is Apple moving into health coaching and tracking your emotions? It's clear that Apple are developing more of its offering with the unstated goal of making you stick around, captured by all the services that bring value to your life. In its latest attempt, Apple's developing AI-backed health coaching and technology for tracking emotions. Mark German from Bloomberg talks about how he's heard about this new coaching service codenamed Quartz, designed to keep users motivated to exercise, improve eating habits, and help them sleep better. AI and Apple Watch data would be used to give tips and create training programs tailored to users, said anonymous sources. This move could be part of their larger health mission, which has made these features fundamental to their products, especially the Apple Watch. Its recent work included expanding the health app to iPads, coming soon, and features aimed at helping people with vision problems. Unsurprisingly, Apple has declined to comment. Quartz brings to mind the wellness and coaching service from Apple and Singapore, Lumi Health, that arrived in 2020. Now, the Singapore program gave out money for staying healthy, whereas Apple's new service has a monthly fee, like its other digital stuff kind of completely different approaches in terms of external and internal motivators to get fit and healthy. It will also likely be a standalone app. Though planned for next year, it's by no means certain it will actually see the light of day. It looks like a complex piece of work driven by several groups in Apple, including not only health, but also Siri, AI, 
and the services division too. That's a lot to line up with everything else going on. In the meantime, Apple plans to roll out an iPad version of its iPhone health app for the first time, which will certainly be welcome in my family and others where perhaps we're more reluctant to give our kids access to our phones every day. The change which will allow users to see ECG results and other health data in a larger format is planned to be included as part of iPad OS 17 later this year. Apple will be hoping that an iPad version will make the app more popular in healthcare where tablets are already established. The app is a key part of the company's health program, holding fitness data from the Apple Watch and other health records too. It's also a way for users to share that information with their doctors. Things are moving fast for Apple in India. It appears that Wistron from Taiwan and India's first iPhone maker is in the process of shutting down its India operations. Along with fellow Taiwanese companies Foxconn and Pegatron Corp, Wistron manufactures Apple's iPhones in India. A major part of its operations in India is centered around its factory in Karnataka. Wistron first set up shop in India in 2008 as a sales and maintenance service center. In 2017, it began making iPhones in the country. Looks like that's coming to an end. The company will most likely withdraw from India and likely approach the National Company Law Tribunal and the Registrar of Companies to dissolve its India operations within the next year, the Hindu reported, citing sources on May the 1st. Wistron's call to take a step back arrived just when Apple is raising its local manufacturing in India. Apple has even gone to the extent of opening two retail stores in the country recently. According to market research firm CounterPoint Research, Apple's India-assembled iPhone saw a 162% increase in value in the year 2022. Now the Tata Group of India, which has been around for 150 years, is expected to take over Wistron's Karnataka factory, which has a staff of over 12,000 people. The Wistron facility is said to be worth more than $600 million, according to a Bloomberg report from January. The Tatas have taken a few measures to up their business with Apple in recent months, and the group has been speeding up its hiring process at its own factory near Bengaluru, where it manufactures iPhone parts. It also announced its plan to launch 100 exclusive Apple stores in India. Looks like things are indeed moving fast for Apple in India. Now it looks like we may start to see some sideload blocking for apps when it arrives. Apple's iPhones are mostly operable no matter where you are, although certain features are limited depending upon where you purchase your phone. For instance, some countries are not able to access Fitness Plus or FaceTime. Apple is now apparently engineering a new setting that has yet to be discussed. 9to5Mac has reported that Apple has the capacity to regulate system features based on where you are. Word is that the system is named Country D and is built into the newest iPhone software, iOS 16.4.1. Actually, it seems to have quietly arrived a little while ago in iOS 16.2, but so far, it hasn't been put to any use yet, but it looks like it's to do with sideloading. As you know, this means that instead of having access purely to the apps in the App Store, users can install other apps via different means and from sources not necessarily approved by Apple. The European Union is now insisting that Apple must enable sideloading, and it's believed that this could become obligatory as early as this year but some sources claim Apple will only allow this in European phones, not US ones. Kind of makes sense. People from the US who want sideloading may hope they can just get an iPhone from Europe and bring it back, but it looks like Country D will make this less likely because it will be able to see where the device is being used and permit or deny sideloading accordingly. Esposito at 9to5Mac says, it combines multiple data such as current GPS location, country code from the Wi-Fi router, and information obtained from the SIM card to determine the country the user is in. Code seen by 9to5Mac makes it clear that this system is designed to set restrictions determined by government regulators. So don't expect it to be a breeze to dodge these regulations like changing settings or importing a foreign iPhone. But if the US ever decides they want sideloading, Apple can just update the system to enable it. Apple hasn't announced sideloading yet and whether it will ever be possible, 
but it could mention it at WWDC 23. That starts on Monday, June the 5th. We'll see the extent of the changes there. Location tracking devices help users find personal items like their keys, purse, luggage, and more through crowdsourced finding networks. However, they can and have been misused. Now these companies are seeking input on how to let users know if there's suspected unwanted tracking. This week, Apple and Google combined to submit a proposed industry specification to tackle the misuse of Bluetooth location tracking devices for unwanted tracking. This pioneering spec makes Bluetooth location tracking devices compatible with unauthorized tracking detection and alerts across iOS and Android. Samsung, Tile, Chipolo, Eufy Security, and Pebblebee have given the thumbs up to the draft spec, which contains advice and directions for manufacturers if they want to incorporate these capabilities into their items. Device makers, safety experts, and advocacy groups all gave feedback which was included in this draft specification. Those interested are invited to take a look and make comments over the next three months. At the end of the comment period, Apple and Google will collaborate to address any feedback and will launch a final version of the spec for unwanted tracking alerts by the end of 2023, which will be included in future versions of iOS and Android. And finally, here's a little fun thing. In case you haven't come across it before, Artifact is a personalized newsfeed aggregator that has a new twist. Founded by Instagram co-founders Kevin Systrom and Mike Krieger, Artifact's original premise has been to offer a personalized experience around news reading, but not one that leaves users trapped in as they were on Facebook. Artifact's home screen has news chosen for you depending on what you read and how you act, but the headline section of the app shows the same news from lots of different sources. Artifact looks at its news sources beforehand to make sure they comply with integrity, such as fact checking and corrections, revealing their funding sources and more. Here's the new twist. Artifact is embracing AI with the launch of a new feature that will now summarize news articles for you. This week, the company revealed a tool that creates summaries with a tap, so readers can get the main points of an article before diving in. To have some extra fun, the feature can also summarize news in different ways, like explain it to me like I'm five, like Gen Z speech, or with just emojis, for instance. The company notes that this is just some fun and not meant to be serious. They caution users that the feature should not replace actually reading the news as AI is not perfect. It's important to note that summaries don't replace the utility of having the full text of the article the company's blog post reads. AI is powerful, but from time to time can make mistakes. So it's important to verify the summary matches the article as you read the full text, it warns. The company said they could throw in some more fun styles for users to play with eventually on top of the ones they have at launch. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe and hit that bell and make sure you don't miss my next video. And on audio, be sure to follow or something like that to get my show. I'm Saab Johal, and this channel is A+. Thanks for being here. Cheers, and go well.